much of the discussion about education is focused on the how of education, the pedagogy. But there's been recent calls to start a conversation about the what of education. And I actually think we need to take a step further back than that and consider the why of education. What's the point of school? Why do students need an education? And I think that's really quite clear. Students are being prepared for a life outside of school, for an uncertain future. The trouble is, we're preparing students for the future with an education system of the past. The world is rapidly changing. We have great increases in technology and the use of technology. We've got offshoring and automation. We've got overconsumption and overpopulation. We've got a loss of traditional jobs. We do have the emergence of new careers. However, there's a gap between the skills that students are leaving school with and the skills that they require in these new jobs. In 2008, IBM conducted a study on 1,500 CEOs and industry leaders in 33 different industries in 80 different countries. And they asked them, what are those skills that you value in workers? And they said two things, adaptability to change and creativity in generating new ideas. They also said that these two skills are sadly lacking in graduates. In the information age, the value of information has decreased. No longer are people valued simply for what they know. What's more important now is what you can do with what you know. People need to be able to synthesise information and critically analyse information and make decisions based on information. So knowledge is being devalued. However, our curriculum is very much focused on knowledge. So the Centre for Curriculum Redesign have proposed a new model, a four-dimensional education model that balances knowledge with skills to be able to apply that knowledge. But as well as that, it's about building character traits. It's all underpinned by metacognition or thinking about thinking. What I intend to do is step through each one of the dimensions and identify how the flipped learning pedagogy can fit in and support each one of these particular dimensions. So let's start with the knowledge dimension. The knowledge dimension is all about what we know and understand. And it's divided into traditional subjects and also modern disciplines. Now, with already a crowded curriculum, it's going to be important to curate these traditional subjects and strip back uh, some of the stuff that's no longer relevant. What I think is particularly good about this is that it talks about identifying meta-concepts and processes. These are those concepts and processes that we want to stick with students when they leave school, that they can apply in the workplace or that they can build on at university, regardless of the discipline. The, in, the, these are the concepts that have intrinsic value, the ones that have cross-curricular applications. An example of it would be feedback loops. As a science teacher, I would teach feedback loops when I'm teaching homeostasis or body control systems. But feedback loops are just as appropriate for coding and just as appropriate for robotics. So, I would, in my designing my unit, I would be thinking about what are the meta concepts and processes? What are those concepts that I really want to stick with my students? And I design my unit around those. One thing I want us to consider as FLIP educators is should we, as FLIP educators, be designing and producing videos of the meta concepts and not get so bogged down with uh, with producing granular videos or videos on granular content and maybe thinking about the higher level meta concepts and in those videos showing how they link in different disciplines. The next part of the knowledge dimension is about these new uh, modern subjects. 
So they're proposing that these modern subjects are far more relevant to the 21st century, but they're still recommending that we uh, identify the meta concepts and processes and focus on those. Embedded across all of the subjects, they're recommending these themes. So themes are literacies, like digital literacy, and information literacy, and environmental literacy, and also design thinking, systems thinking, and computational thinking. So what I want to do in my practice is, again, when I'm designing my learning experiences, focus specifically on uh, embedding these in my learning. Like, for example, if I was teaching ecology and teaching ecosystems, I could use that, obviously, to teach about environmental literacy. But another perfect opportunity would be to teach it, it regarding systems thinking, because it demonstrates that the, uh, an ecosystem is interrelated and the organisms are interdependent. So and that's exactly what systems thinking is. The next area is the skills area, and that is about how we apply what we know. The Centre for Curriculum Redesign has identified four 21st century skills, and they say that they are very much in demand by employers. Uh, they're also the skills that are currently um, very much lacking in graduates. They say that these skills are far more important than any particular piece of knowledge. And these skills are communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. The teaching and development of skills and knowledge need to work hand in hand. You can't teach skills independent of a context. For example, you can't critically think about nothing. So the content provides the impetus for collaboration. It provides the inspiration for creativity and it provides the subject matter for critical thought. Knowledge and skills are most effectively built in uh, active learning experiences because students construct the knowledge and skills required to solve problems. So problem-based learning, project-based learning, inquiry and constructivism are all related to students building knowledge and building skills to solve problems. Importantly, the knowledge isn't um, front-loaded to the beginning of the learning cycle. It's somewhere in between when the students require the knowledge. The knowledge becomes a tool to solve a problem, as opposed to being the focus of the learning. Now, in flipped learning, it works hand in hand with active learning. Again, it's because the, uh, the classroom is transformed into a highly interactive and dynamic active learning opportunity because, because of all that class time that's been freed up. What I'm going to do in my deliberate practice is ensure that I design learning experiences so that students have an opportunity to practice uh, and apply those four C's of the 21st century skills. Another great opportunity to develop the 21st century skills in flipped learning is student-created content. Because students collaborate, they're creative, they obviously communicate, and they have to, be, they have to think critically about information uh, and synthesise information. The next area is a building of character traits. So the character traits are the values and beliefs that help students make good decisions. And they've identified four, uh, six traits that are, are important in the 21st century. Clearly, active learning again is a great opportunity to be able to develop these uh, character traits. But another way that flipped learning helps with development of these traits is through flipped mastering. At a recent TED talk, 
Sol Khan told the story of how flipped mastering is a great opportunity to develop agency, perseverance and grit. Now whilst they're different names, they're all still, still very, very important um, character traits. And the final area is meta-learning and that's thinking about thinking. It's how students uh, set goals and reflect on their behaviour and the performance towards those goals and modify their behaviour to be able to achieve those goals. So it's very much about students being self-directed and self-motivated and being reflective. All very important skills in the 21st century. Also, uh, the other area they talk about with this meta-learning area is uh, a growth mindset. And I think, again, flip learning can help with a growth mindset because in the classroom, the teacher spends time with every student in every class every day. And that provides an opportunity for authentic, real conversations with students. And the teacher is able to listen for um, things that the students say that give you an idea about their mindset. For example, a student might say something like, I just don't have a maths brain, or I, I'll never get this. That gives the teacher a great opportunity to have a conversation with the student about mindset and how the student can re reshape that thinking and reframe that thinking so it's more of a growth mindset. So if the why of education is to prepare students for this uncertain future and the what of education is the four dimensions, I'm very confident that the how can well be flipped learning. I think we can see that flipped learning fits very, very nicely into all four dimensions. And, and I think that the four dimensional framework provides a very positive opportunity for uh, curriculum discussion and reform going forward. I know that whilst I'm limited in what I can do as a classroom teacher, there's loads of ideas in those four dimensional educational model that I can implement now to improve my pedagogy and to improve the outcome of my students, to help my students be prepared for that 21st century.